my name is K. Anand Chandran. I secured an All India rank of 197 in the UPSC Civil Services Examination 2019. And in this video, uh, I will be basically describing the GS4 papers, the nature of those papers, the four GS papers, and my approach towards it. Now, when we examine the structure of the UPSC Civil Services Examination, we find that there are three main stages. So, first is the objective preliminary stage, the second is the main stage. And finally, we have the interview. And in the mains, we have four GS general studies papers, one essay paper, two optional papers, and two qualifying language papers. So the four GS papers, they are together worth 1000 marks. Each GS paper is worth 250 marks. The paper consists of 10, 10 mark questions and 10, 15 mark questions, GS 1, 2, 3. When it comes to GS 4, there are usually four 20 mark questions, which are case studies. Now, what are these papers? The GS1 paper consists of subjects like uh, Indian heritage and culture, history and geography of the world, you have society. And in GS2, you have constitution, governance, polity, social justice and international relations. Coming to GS3, it has technology, economic development, environment, biodiversity, disaster management and security also and GS4 is the ethics paper. So let us examine these papers one by one. GS1 main subjects as I have told you are history, art and culture, geography and society. Now one thing that we need to understand is that whether it is for the prelims or for the mains our study material basically remains the same. The difference lies in how we use that material. So for prelims if raw facts are more important. In mains it is about how you use your knowledge in your answer. Because we know that prelims is objective, it's, uh, uh, it's MCQs, while mains they are descriptive, you have to write the answers. So that is how the nature of these two examinations changes. Now uh, whether it's for GS1 or 2 or 3 or 4, the basic thing that we need to understand is that there are two major uh, factors that determine the marks. One is the content and the second is the presentation. Now what does this content mean? It means that, so our objective is ob always to maximize the content in our answers and that is what makes the difference between an average to below average answer and an average to above average answer. So even if the question is say something subjective which asks our opinion, the way we make it objective, the way we give it substance is by adding content. And this content will be the one which you have already gained in your prelims preparation. Although you may, you will have to brush up your knowledge, you will have to keep working on these things again and again. Uh, you cannot just uh, say that since I have studied this in prelims, I will I won't need it now, because whatever you have, whatever you have studied, you may have studied in a different way with a different purpose in mind, and in any case you may have forgotten that. So that's why we keep, we need to keep working on that. So content. Next is the presentation. Now what do I mean by this? So whether it's any answer, suppose even if you have a lot of knowledge about a particular topic, uh, of from which a question has come, still. In the UPSC perspective, your answer may not be, uh, may not fetch you as many marks as you may expect. And the reason why this happens is because of the presentation. So the basic rule that we have to understand is that our answer should be clearly legible and all the specific content that we have, it needs to be, it needs to stand out, it needs to be visible. And when it comes to organizing our answers, what we need to understand is that any question will have various aspects even if it is at first glance um, uh, a, a unidimensional question still we will have to add a counterpoint or a challenges or uh, way forward all these things we will have to add and that is why every answer will have multiple segments and each segment needs to address each aspect of the question we cannot leave any aspect of the question unaddressed, which we have to adjust the weightage that we give to each segment also. 
and to make the segment stand out we can use many techniques such as putting you know using a headline and putting it in a box so when the examiner sees okay so he has addressed all the aspects of this question and i can clearly see the how he has addressed the various aspects when i read the headlines which are clearly visible because they are in a box then his job becomes that much easier and that's how we can fetch marks and when it comes to organizing our content uh personally i would prefer points over paragraphs because in points you can be uh, sharp precise concise you do not need to use many uh, fillers or uh, vague sentences or vague words so your answer will be very sharp and each point when you add a content you have to make you have to make it stand out as well and you can use it by using underlines or such other techniques say for example in your answer you are giving uh, you are giving a statistic the poverty rate in india as per the rangarajan commission so the rangarajan commission the poverty rate as per the rangarajan commission these are the these are what may one may call the content of your answer and these need to stand out so the keywords that there are in the question you have to use those keywords especially say for example in a, sub, in a subject like international relations there you will have to use such terms such as non alignment or strategic autonomy and these are specific technical terms which have specific meanings and by using them one can add quality to one's answers similarly coming to maps tables etc suppose there is a question about the indus valley sites in that in that answer you will have to use a map and in that you can point out the indus valley sites the important indus valley sites or the sites in question depending upon the need of the answer similarly if a question is about say the monsoon climate or the agricultural regions of india the climates of india so for these questions which come from geography you can draw a map you can uh, illustrate the different climatic regions or cropping patterns and such other things and that is how you substantiate your answer it's, it it should not be just raw text uh similarly a question say about the red corridor or naxalism maoism a question in internal security so to address this question one can draw a map once again highlight the high red corridor the naxalism affected areas in eastern and central india so that is how we add quality to our answers and that is how we present our answers so organizing our answer by segmenting the answer as per the uh, various aspects of the question finally we are adding content through points and try to number those points don't just use bullets or uh, arrows or such things one can use points as long as they are inside the margins so you can use 1 2 3 4 points now coming to gs4 so this is a basic approach whether it's gs1 2 or 3 to add maximum content and to present it in a neat and legible manner so as to make the examiner's job easier uh as far as the study materials are concerned like i said is basically the same as what you have already studied for your preliminaries for subjects such as society uh one can also use a kind of uh, discussions with one's peer groups so as to build upon certain concepts such as uh, casteism or communalism or women's issues and one can use these discussions with one's peer groups so as to uh, generate points which one can then use in our answers and on this aspect i would like i would like to add another i would like to add another point that for some major topics so that you save your time by not having to uh, formulate or think about uh, points for some major topics you can already have notes say for example cyber security or internal security or monsoon climate so these are uh, some major topics on which you can have ready notes such that when the question arises obviously the question will have a certain orientation then you can use this specific content in uh, and you oriented it oriented as per the demand of the question and then you can answer it now coming to the gs4 ethics paper it's a bit different from the rest gs1 to 3 as we know so in ethics there there will be say four case studies generally personally i start with the case studies because they are worth 20 marks so uh, if you search for in the, in the net you will find a lot of materials to study for ethics but personally i feel that ethics is something that one can prepare on one's own suppose uh, and case studies are basically about that you know 
case study you have to put yourself in that kind of in the situation that is given in the case study and in that situation what will be your choices it is very realistic uh, so one can list out those choices and one can list out the pros and cons of adopting each choice most of the case studies can be structured in this manner some cannot so for that for those we, need, we would need a separate approach so in this case most of the case studies can be addressed uh, even if you put some time into it say 13 to 14 minutes it will be worth it because case study is worth 20 marks and coming to the rest of the ethics papers suppose someone is unfamiliar with the various terms like integrity or fortitude which one finds in these uh, ethics paper then one can refer the def definitions that we can find in net but otherwise if you have like a personal definition or if you have a personal understanding of what these things mean you can use that also there is no hard and fast rule that you have to use some standard definition and whatever question is it, it is we first uh, just uh, like present the situation that we have what is the basic issue here suppose the basic issue is an ethical dilemma so we can highlight that so that the examiner gets the point that we have understood this question and then we can answer, address this that question and in ethics generally it is said that there is a subjective element what we can do to make our answer stand out is use uh, content like thinkers or examples so if for example something like uh, anarchy then we can use the ideas that have been put forward by various anarchist philosophers and uh, we can always use thinkers like Gandhiji and Buddha in our ethics papers. So the middle path of Buddha that is that can be a very uh, good way forward or a path to adopt that is a middle path that we don't go into any extreme. So that is how we can use the thinkers in our answers. And uh, so that is the basic approach towards GS 1, 2, 3 and 4. Um, for content presentation and if it comes to ethics there needs to be an originality of thought also and we can also use thinkers and examples so as to add specific content to our answer and that is how we can address the general studies papers so uh, i hope that this video was beneficial for the aspirants also thank you